white badger here. Now camcorders are without doubt getting smaller and smaller, yet they're packed with more and more features for your hard-earned buck. Even Canon's new XF105, which boasts broadcast standard 50 megabits per second acquisition, is barely the size of a small wholemeal loaf. But today, we're going to look at the positively minute end of the scale and at the entry-level camcorder, which is so small it's virtually invisible to the naked eye. Sony called it the MC50E, I call it the hamster. And here it is, weighing in at just 450 grams, which I think is about seven foot four in proper measurements. The hamster sits neatly in the prosumer category and offers an amazing array of technical wizardry for a unit costing less than 1,200 pounds plus VAT. And I say entry level because, in honesty, if you roll up to shoot a gritty documentary for the BBC with this baby, your cred is going straight down the tubes. But if, like me, you believe that size really doesn't matter, prepare to be surprised. So, what do you get for your money? Well, at the heart of the MC50E is a 2.88 inch Exmor CMOS sensor feeding 64 gig of internal memory, which at the highest quality setting allows almost six hours of recording. There's also a single external slot that allows all sorts of removable media to be used, including Memory Stick Duo in standard Pro and Pro HD, and SD or SHDC cards. Now the color viewfinder at the back here is 0.2 inches and 2,100 dots. It's not brilliant, but perfectly acceptable. But the hamster has an absolutely stonking flip out LCD screen, a whopping 3.5 inches and 921,600 dots resolution. So in HD mode, the Sony utilizes ABC HD to achieve 1080 50i, 1920-1080, and it will also shoot 1440 by 1080i. Uh, there's no progressive scan. In standard def, 720 by 576 50i in 16.9 or 4.3 formats, shooting to MPEG-2 is available, and the overall data rate is 24 megabits per second. At the front end here is Sony's neat little G lens, which at f3.8 to 38 millimeters gives 10 times optical zoom and 120 times digital zoom with enhancement circuitry, which is actually not that bad at all. The hamster also has steady shots with an active mode, which aids image stabilization, and a six blade iris allows shallow depth of field shots to be achieved fairly easily. Because of the diddy size of the Sony, the zoom is mounted transversely at the back of the unit here, and that might take a little bit of getting used to in handheld mode. But quite a neat feature is that you can take 8.3 megabyte stills using the photo button mounted behind the zoom, and that is whilst you're shooting video. Audio-wise, there is an internal microphone mounted at the top of the camera body at the front. Uh, external connectivity is via a single mini jack input for a microphone with a headphone jack below. So, what's it like in action? Well, we took the hamster out on a covert mission to the smoke to find out. You know, the hamster really is quite exceptional. It's easy to set up, easy to use, and for its size, turns in some really good pictures. The shots in the bar that you've just seen, for example, were actually handheld with the steady shot enabled. Now, what do we like? Well, although there's no handle with the hamster, so handheld shots are a matter of standard viewfinder stance or balancing the unit on your palm for extra stability, I was able to turn in some perfectly acceptable shots. The unit powers up when you open the very nice flip out screen and is ready to go in seconds, and I really like that. And the screen is huge, sharp, and has a touchscreen membrane, so accessing the menu is easy peasy. The menu system is very stripped down, very simple to understand, and instead of the more professional adjustment options, such as Gamma offers a menu of scenes, such as landscape, fireworks, and so on. 
This function can also be set to automatic, leaving the hamster to sort out the best settings for you, which in practice worked quite well for me. Now, what didn't we like? Well, not a lot really, although the hamster does have a GPS unit within its tummy, and by touching the relevant icon on the screen, you can find out where you are. Now, if I'm on a shoot, I invariably know where I am, so it seems a little pointless, but you can retrieve shots by the location at which they were shot, as long as the GPS function is enabled. So if you've been shooting multiple location program, I guess it could come in handy to preserve continuity in the edit. On the subject of editing and ingesting in particular, you'll need a program to convert the raw shots into editable format. I used iSkySoft's iMedia Converter, which works rather like Sony's XDCAM EX Clip Browser software. And I was able to set my preferred import parameters and transfer the footage to my Mac, then drag them into the project folder and onto the timeline. Ingesting's rapid with clear progress bars, and I have to say that on the timeline against cameras costing three times the money, the picture stood up really quite well. The only other thing I was slightly disappointed about is the lack of pro audio connections. But although the onboard microphone through Sony's 3.5 mini jack worked perfectly, you could easily add a BeachTech DXA2T if you need XLR inputs. So, it's small, it's easy to use, it has an amazing specification for the price point, and the images produced really look very nice indeed. If you're looking for a startup camera or maybe an inexpensive second unit, the hamster could be for you. But equally, if you're shooting at the higher end and need something really small and quick to set up, something you can grab shots with in tight places, or where you need to be unnoticeable as possible, Sony's MC50E, for the money, is a great investment. I love it.